What is up everybody? I'm No Lex Given here with your afternoon snap. Just a quick video today. I want to go over some of my thoughts on today's featured location, which is Vibranium Mine. So Vibranium Mines, after you play a card there, shuffle three Vibranium into your deck. Vibranium, I'm probably not going to throw it up on the screen right now just because I'm trying to get this video out as quickly as possible but it is a 1-4 with ongoing, it can't be destroyed. So I wanted to take a look at some decks that I thought might be fun to play today. The main card of the day is going to be Darkhawk because whenever your opponent plays to Vibranium Mines, Darkhawk gets plus six power. So the point of this deck is pretty silly, but you play a few cards to try to encourage your opponent to play to Vibranium Mines as much as possible, sometimes potentially forcing them to play to Vibranium Mines in the form of Jean Grey or Legion, which can turn every location into Vibranium Mines. And then from there, you are also trying to copy Darkhawk's power. We've got Mystique to just straight up copy the ability, Taskmaster to copy its power, and Arnim Zola to send Darkhawk to both of the other two locations. Ravona helps you cheat out all of those cards as well as Mr. Negative. Sometimes even just Psylocke can be enough. Psylocke on turn five into a turn six, Darkhawk plus Mystique is enough to uh, allow you to cast both of those, uh, is what I meant to say there. Uh, one other cool thing that you can do with Psylocke is play it on turn three to set up a turn four Legion. That's going to mean that there are then two turns, sometimes even the second half of turn four if you have priority, uh, but then you're at least getting turns five and turn six where every single play that your opponent makes will contribute towards giving your Darkhawk plus six power. So then you can make it go even above 24 power, which is I think what will be the standard Darkhawk power with this deck. It's kind of silly. We're not running anything like Rock Slide or um, uh, Korg. We're, we're just relying on the featured location, but this is, this is more of a fun deck. This is a silly deck. There's three other cards here that I didn't talk about, which like I said, kind of encourage your opponent to play to the Vibranium Mines. Goose and Storm make it more difficult to play at other locations. You do not want to storm Vibranium Mines. Don't do that. I will give a small exception with a nod to the fact that the deck does have Storm plus Legion as a potential combo. You might be able to go uh, turn three or, or turn two Ravona or Psylocke into a turn three Darkhawk, which allows you to go turn four Storm into a turn five Legion, locking your opponent out for the rest of the game. No Jeff in the deck, so you'll want to have a turn one Nebula to also gain additional power from that play. And Nebula also does a great job of encouraging your opponent to play into Vibranium Mines. That's the other reason that Nebula is in the deck. I kind of just wanted to do a quick deck tech just on this deck just so that I could get it out very quickly this video uh, just through this deck together I will say just some other notes on vibranium it does help that uh, it, it gives uh, it gets additional power from spectrum and can't be destroyed by destroyer so this list ongoing destruction spectrum destroyer could also be a reasonable call and I think that one other thing uh, there's a Cerebro 4 list in the article on SnapFan. It's kind of just, you know, if you're looking for something fun to try, didn't even build it myself, don't actually own Martyr, uh, though you could play it without Martyr, it's just like Ant-Man. Some other cards that happen to have exactly four power. Uh, but one other thing that I think that, that you can do today, so this Zabu Loki list, um, this is like a fine one. It, it never ran Chavez to begin with, but like any Loki list really, uh, where's my Anaya Loki last? Yeah, uh, Anaya Loki. I think that even this is like a fine deck today because when I play this deck, oftentimes on the final turn of the game, I'll have an energy or two left over. Now, sometimes the final turn is like um, Annihilus plus Demon or something, though generally I'm dropping Annihilus on turn five to try to junk my opponent. And then the final turn of the game is just like triggering Werewolf or playing cheap cards from Loki. And I've often found that in the past few weeks while I've been playing this deck, in games that have Vibranium Mines, I'm purposefully playing into Vibranium Mines 
after I have already drawn my combo pieces, of course. I'm not going to play them if I haven't drawn, like if I've drawn half of this combo, or if I haven't drawn Loki yet. But if I already know what my game plan is going to be on turns four and five, because I either have this combo, or I have Loki plus like Snow Guard Falcon or something, then I'll play to Vibranium Mind, so that way I've got some cheap cards. If I draw them early, then they're just Loki cards. And then on the final turn of the game, it's just a nice way to contribute additional power to the board that can um, even more. That can be even more true if you're running like a Hit Monkey deck uh, for you know pool two players. That could be like an Angela and Bishop deck. These are decks that are often just looking for any amount of power. When you're playing these things, you do have to be kind of aware that if your opponent is running Darkhawk, you're going to be making that bigger, and many people are just going to be playing Darkhawk today. So that's definitely something to consider. One other thing that I wanted to bring up at the very least is... I have to cycle through this favorites here, is Rogue. Rogue kind of seems like it's going to be a big card today. Steal the ongoing effect from an enemy card at this location. And this is going to be uh, import an important way to grab more Darkhawks. There's an argument to be made that Rogue should be in this deck. And then on the final turn, I believe you also have the option to go like Rogue plus Mystique. I think Mystique copies Rogue. Anybody want to let me know in the comments down below? Uh, the one reason that I would say to potentially avoid playing Rogue today is because everyone is going to have Vibranium in their deck. I don't think I can look at uncollectibles to actually, you know what, I'll, I'll throw Vibranium, I'll, I'll do a little bit of editing at the start of this video, I'll throw, I should have just had Vibranium on the screen the whole time now that I think about it, but there is, there is Vibranium on the screen the whole time. Wow, would you look at that? It's been above me this entire video. Uh, so, yeah, um, Vi uh, Rogue can very easily be played around with Vibranium. You just throw like one or two Vibranium in the location of the cards that you're trying to protect from Rogue. That just makes Rogue actually potentially like at its worst today. So if you're really trying to stop opposing Darkhawks, probably just want to run Enchantress. That's gonna be it for me today. I will probably have a video out tomorrow with this deck because it looks sweet. And uh, maybe I'll have changed it out a little bit since then. It's a little bit silly. I don't know if like you want to go the full Mr. Negative route, uh, but it seemed like a good thing to play because I wanted to look for other ways to play Darkhawk and Mystique on the final turn of the game. But maybe this is too silly and I should play like Cork. Um, this deck gets a little bit awkward in the Gene Gray side of things, other than it's like a Mr. Negative deck. So turn three Gene Gray, turn four Mr. Negative is actually a pretty good curve. Then you just you know, maybe you play one card into the mines on turn five, but on turn six, you get to start off playing something small into the mines, and then you get to spread out a bunch of power elsewhere, and that can obviously be really powerful, and you might even skip turn five half the time, just so that way turn six you can play, like, Nebula into mines, and then go Darkhawk, Arnim Zola in a different location, and spread a bunch of power everywhere. Hopefully that was enough to kind of wet your whistle, and hopefully I'll be able to have some fun highlights with this deck tomorrow, but feel free to play it yourself. Seems like it could be fun. For today, though, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.